I'm sure you know that that we've digitized physical gold and silver and put it on the blockchain. And and um, because really the, what we're trying to do here is bring money back to the people. Um, and as long as you know that it's allocated in your name and you put it on the blockchain, then you can see uh, every single transaction is yours or you can take delivery of it. But I think it, it's 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 because gold's been is money been money for over 5000 years. Uh, and so so really what we're trying to do is make sure that that along with the bitcoins of this world, that there are some asset based um, uh, blockchain uh, assets, digital assets, which can actually be weighed up against any other asset. This is the mind blowing part about it, because we're in the wholesale market right now. So we see these same banks who are playing using position concentration of paper silver to control the price. They're out there. Standard Chartered, for example, coming into our vault, our, our, our supply, all the suppliers from Russia, Kazakhstan, you name it, wherever they we, wherever we are trying to buy silver, they are there and they're offering massive premiums. They're buying. In fact, there is. No, and I made an announcement about this last time on my last episode. We are now sold wholesale silver. If you want size, September 22. Now, what the hell's going on? What the hell is the price today doing at when we know these guys have bought all the forward production? Why are they buying forward production? Because they know what you and I know, but the average person doesn't know. There is no silver out there. It's already reached the point where, and I think they use, they, they make sure they supply wholesale bars to the Samsungs, the Nokias, uh, uh, you know, all, all the industrial users, because if they didn't, if they had to shut this assembly die down, you can make how quickly they would, it wouldn't be just in time anymore. They'd go out and buy 50, 100, 200 tons. There would be no silver. The price of silver would spike through the roof. So the guys who are betting against the price of silver, make sure these guys get their wholesale bars. And the illusion is that there's plenty of silver. There's no silver. Guarantee there's no silver. Right. And, and, and the most important thing for people who are listening, if you're watching the silver market, you're watching the wrong market. The reason I, I bring this magazine in here is because what this article says here, this is who I'm watching. You watch who's spending the money. It's the government. Do you know, and, and I'll say it again. Uh, governments have spent 17 trillion on the pandemic alone, 16 percent of the world GDP. That's who I'm watching. Not, I, I'm just watching. I said, holy natural. Do you know what I mean? What are you watching? I'm watching the government. I don't trust them. I never have. So, I mean, they're, they're so incompetent. I, I just can't believe it. You know, I mean, if you listen to Jim, Jim Records and I are good friends. And he just, and he is an insider, insider into this whole system. And he talks about how incompetent the Fed is and the Bank of England. They're incompetent people. They're like Marx, highly educated people who don't know how to make money. They're not capitalists, they're socialists. And if you understand that, you'll buy more gold and silver today, not next, next year. Do you know what I mean? You just want as many as you can get now. How many ounces, not what's the price? You watch the ounces. So I'd set up gold, I'm gonna, I'm, you know, this year I'm gonna have five gold coins. You've, I'm sure you know that that we've digitized physical gold and silver and put it on the blockchain, and and um, because really the, what we're trying to do here is bring money back to the people, um, and as long as you know that it's allocated in your name and you put it on the blockchain, then you can see uh, every single transaction is yours, or you can take delivery of it. But I think it, it's 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 because gold's been is money been money for over five thousand years. Uh, and so so really what we're trying to do is make sure that that along with the bitcoins of this world, that there are some asset based um, uh, blockchain uh, assets, digital assets, which can actually be weighed up against any other asset, um, whether it's real estate, whether it's uh, stocks, bonds, whatever. Uh, and, and uh, you know, by by sharing in the, the fee pool we can create a yield and that brings that's suddenly bringing us institutional interest. And what we're trying to do is get the price, get more interest into gold and silver, bring it into the, the asset managers hands, let them see that there is something here 
other than a barbarous relic, which they're purely educated to do. And right now we see the stock market, these guys chasing a bubble, chasing the bubble, and no one gets fired if it all gets goes wrong. The one guy that buys gold, he gets fired if it doesn't go up and the stock market does. It's a crazy situation. Well, it's, pay, it's, it's, it's a derivative. A stock is a derivative. You know, I'll, I'll give a simple definition of a derivative. If I have an orange and I cut the orange in half and I squeeze it, the orange juice is a derivative of the orange. So a stock is a derivative of a company. Gold and silver are not derivatives of but God. If you understand that, that's why I call it God's money. And I call blockchain people's money because it's outside the Fed and outside the Treasury. It's outside the Bank of England. It's outside the, uh, the German Bundesbank. And in a few years, you're going to find out these banks are in serious trouble because of debt, because all the Fed and the, and the Bank of England has to do is print more money. And as long as people will accept this toilet paper like this, people are happy. But the moment one day somebody says, oh, my God, this, you know, I, I'm $10 billion, but it's not worth it. This couldn't buy me. I, I was in Zimbabwe. This wouldn't buy me an egg. Goodness you know, me. $10 billion Zim dollars. So and when, then, did this, what's the, when did you pick up this? When were you in Zimbabwe? Just out of interest. Uh, 2004. Wow. And that, that is a coin. That is the, the, the note that was, that literally was circulating at that time. Yes. Correct. Correct. Uh, wow. but, I go to Africa. I, I love Africa. It's one of the greatest. I just love it. You know, what a great continent, rich continent. Yeah. Um, but anyway, our, what's screwing us all up are academics, the academic elite, you know, the liberal left and all this. I don't know where their heads are at, but they're not up in air, they're up, they're up their butts. And so the Fed fits into that category. The Bank of England fits in that category. They're doing all these projections and all this, but they're not attached to real, reality. And that's why that little Vietnamese woman in 1972, she woke me up. She goes, well, what am I doing? Hmm. You know, I, I tried to get a discount on gold from 50 bucks. And I ask all your listeners right now, if I said, I'll sell you my Kruger for 50 bucks, would you say, I'll think about it? <laughs> Not one of our subscribers would. <laughs> yeah, they think about it. They want to discuss the, um, the, the Fed, the Bank of International, the BIS, and I don't know. I just want how many ounces you got, what's your entry price? Like, like Bitcoin, my entry price was 6000 bucks, So I was a little late, but I caught the move up. And it's, a, it's about 55000 now, so I'm selling the money. I don't know anything but that. I don't like to discuss much. Once I see that movement going, and like I'm talking about the movement, and as a miner, I know that the gold reserves are being depleted. And a lot of the gold now found is in countries that hate us. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know what people are waiting for. What are you discussing? Do you know, let me show this again to you. 17 trillion dollars. Robert, it rolls off the tongue. It rolls off the tongue. But but what is a trillion? I mean, I can't even conceive the size of a trillion. My brain won't even conceive it. Now, a, a billion is nine zeros. So a trillion must be 12 zeros and a quadrillion. You see, it's not it's not the trillion It's the derivative market, which is taking the trillions and taking that one more derivative. It's in the quadrillions, Andy. It's called the shadow banking system. The shadow banking system is so huge that if if that'd be like I owe you money, so say, okay, Andy, I can't pay you, so you can't pay somebody else, and you can't pay somebody else. When that whole shadow banking system collapses, that's exactly what record says. You won't be able to buy it at any price. They won't have it, and people won't take paper then. Well, this leads to your one thing which keeps ringing true. And, and, and if we had to end on anything, Robert, it's how many ounces of gold, how many ounces of silver do you have? And I think 
thank you for that because I think that cuts through all the bullshit, cuts through absolutely everything, all the talk about anything. How many do you have to... Robert, that is such a strong message because, as you say, it'll be unavailable at some point. And just because the paper market tells you today there's loads of it, which there isn't, um, then obviously... And even gold, as I say, even gold, we talked about silver being sold out till wholesale silver in any size out till September of next year. Um, already, kilo bar orders, orders are moved in gold out till next year already. So, you know, this is ludicrous, but what, what the hell is going on with the price today? Nothing but paper. So I, I'm just so thank you for those sage words because people should listen.